I do like a lot of things in the Netherlands. It might seem like I don't like very many things in the Netherlands, but after having lived in Korea and America and now here, there are a few things that I think are just plain like flat out just so much better in the Netherlands than in the other two countries that I've lived. Um, not saying they're perfect. I mean, it's me. I don't say things are perfect, <laughs> but they are better. I think they're as close to getting to perfect as I've seen. Not saying that there's not something more close to perfect out there. Um, it's just, this is the closest I've seen. But before I get into the things that I think are better in the Netherlands, uh, I want to do some thank yous to some subscribers, some know-it-alls. And uh, there's a new know-it-all, Jeremy Fierson. So thank you so much for joining and becoming a know-it-all. And if you don't know what a know-it-all is, it's just someone who has subscribed to the channel and has, you know, hit the notification bell and has done all the things. So thank you, I appreciate it. And then I also want to thank some longer time know-it-alls. So thank you, Ernest M. Adriano Loretti, Sam Janssen, Igor Nazavarov. I'm sorry, I know that one I got really bad, sorry. Um, Sachio Sota, I think I also butchered that one and I'm really sorry if I uh, didn't say your name right. I'm really bad at them. And again, I'm sorry. And um, I do wanna talk about a couple of comments that I got from my last video where I installed a ceiling fan in my apartment. Um, I kind of talked about tips for installing one in the Netherlands, but then I thought I'd just show you that like I actually did one. <laughs> and uh, how even once you know how to do it, it still comes with some trials and errors the more and more you do them. Um, so I do appreciate Yo Chaco Tube pointing out that I should have wore a mask when I was drilling into my ceiling. Um, that's kind of a no-brainer that I obviously had no brain for at the moment to think of. So, thanks for pointing that out and I hope everybody else is wearing their masks when they do that because we all have them now. So, we might as well use them when we're doing things in our house. And then, uh, Cluster Pain also gave me some good points about like checking the wires beforehand. I also had a friend that mentioned that, but I had already moved in and already started trying to install lights and I didn't have any tools for checking the wires and if they were good or not and stuff like that. But I heard from my friend that there are kits for like when you move into a new house that has like these different tools in it and things to help you install lights and whatnot. And I didn't know about that before. So I think I might have to do some like tips for moving into a new house or something in the Netherlands that includes that because that's gold. Like people want that kind of information, I think. So thank you for that reminder, Cluster Pain. I really appreciate it. So I guess uh, we'll kind of get into the things that I think are just better in the Netherlands. Sorry, gotta wait. I was actually about to edit my video and there was a couple of new subscribers and now we're at 600. Yay, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I'm just looking up the names now for who subscribes. So Eliza Veta Roos and Johan Bilder. So thank you both so much and sorry if I messed up your names. I'm, I'm so happy though. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 600 now. Oh, thank you. I love peanut butter in the Netherlands. And specifically the processed peanut butter because personally I do like making my own homemade peanut butter with just regular nuts. Um, just putting them in a um, food processor and letting it go until it's nice and smooth. It doesn't take very long at all. Uh, so that's what I like to do. But when I don't feel up to making my own peanut butter because I'm I don't have any on hand and buying them in the supermarket is a bit expensive so I like to buy them in bulk and so when I can't do that I of course buy a jar of it and what I really like is that they're processed peanut butter um, I can find it with absolutely no sugar in it and it also is uh, I don't know I just feel like the creaminess is better it doesn't feel like it feels more like a natural creaminess, like my homemade peanut butter kind of tastes like. And it tastes less processed. I'm not saying it is less processed. I'm just saying it tastes less processed. 
Uh, and I don't understand why in America the peanut butter has so much sugar in it. You can buy peanut butter here with sugar in it. Actually, a lot of brands do have a little bit of sugar in it, but not to the point where it's like super sweet. Um, they even have American style peanut butter here, <laughs> which just means it's really sweet. And for me, I, I love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And I just don't understand why if you have a sweet jam, why you want to put a sweet peanut butter with it. It makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, I do want to say that there is a caveat with this whole peanut butter thing though, is that in America they do have like these machines in stores that will grind peanuts into a nice smooth natural peanut butter with no additives or anything in it and that's fantastic but I would say that's not processed peanut butter I would say that's like really natural organic peanut butter and uh, speaking of that in America when you see a natural peanut butter like in the processed peanut butter aisle you'll see a separ separation Sorry about that. You'll see a separation between the oil and like the actual butter itself. And I don't know why that's there. And I think that's really gross. And that's not at all what happens when all you do is take peanuts and grind it. Like there's not a separation between oil and peanuts. So whatever American processing peanut butter companies do, it's it's not good overall. Of course, there are brands that are much better. Um, but, uh, my goodness, they're just so much more expensive and I don't really like that. So, um, yeah, overall, like, a nice, cheap, no-name brand peanut butter is really good here. So, yay! And as far as Korea peanut butter, it's basically like American peanut butter. I went to the grocery store today and, you know, I find that the way that the Dutch do their grocery shopping carts, which is standard, um, is that they have you typically, not during COVID of course, but typically they have you put in a coin into the shopping cart and usually it's like a Euro coin um, and you know, a Euro can buy things. So you have to put that in to get a cart out and then um, in order obviously to get your coin back, you have to push in a little connector and then you're good to go um, with your coin back. And I like this because it forces people to put their carts back from where they got it. Now, of course, uh, you can get these little, um, these little plastic or metal things from the store that you can put in instead. And so, like, no woes if you lose it because it didn't cost you anything. And it's not really worth anything either. So, I guess people still have like less motivation to put it back, but people still typically put them back. Now during COVID that people don't have to use the coins because the stores have just unlocked all of them because everybody needs to be able to use a cart. Um, I have noticed that people don't put them away very often, but I'm just talking about the standard Dutch way that I really like. I, I think another reason why this whole cart thing works as well as it does is that there's not really good parking lots at grocery stores. And so it's like on street parking, so most people also just like to take their groceries out of the cart immediately, leave the cart in the store and walk out. Because a lot of times there's stairs, it's not really, like the cart won't make it to your car very easily. Um, places with good parking lots, I don't know what they look like with shopping carts, but here it's nice and clear um, in the areas that I've lived and I think that's really nice. And I wish that was more of the case in America. And Korea, they were pretty decent with their carts, but they didn't have anything kind of motivating or forcing people to take back their shopping carts. So, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit different still. In America, there are stores, I guess Aldi's <laughs> is really it. And it's here in the Netherlands, so I'm guessing they just kept that model with the grocery carts in America uh, and it does work there as well, but it's only a quarter. So some people really don't care about a quarter because uh, you can't really buy anything with a quarter. So I wish they would make it higher, but then you're asking people to get a dollar coin, which isn't very common <laughs> just to use a shopping cart at your store, which would be a little bit ridiculous. So yeah, I 
I think eh, it kind of works in America as well, even though it's only a quarter. But yeah, I think the Euro is much better. And like I said, everybody likes a clean parking lot and carts not being all over the place. And employees, of course, deserve to be able to not have to chase shopping carts around everywhere. So I think shopping carts is uh, better here, at least the return of them. This is my little buddy Chubby. He's such a good boy. And this is his jealous brother, Chubby. <laughs> Always wanting lots of attention from me. And I have found that even though I have many cats, I also have another cat named Tiny, that I was able to easily find some good apartments that allow cats. I find that a lot of places are a bit more um, hesitant to take animals in America and in Korea I still found places as well but again I found that people were always quite hesitant about it and in the Netherlands it seems to not be such a big deal. The number of cats don't seem to be too important either. I mean, of course, they don't want you to have like 20, but when I said three or something, they didn't really care. So I did like that. Um, and I do think the openness to pets is really nice compared to other countries. Okay, this one, I don't really know how to say it without it sounding weird, but I think that stress is better in the Netherlands. And what I mean by that is more like the handling of stress. The idea of like that being overstressed, overworked, being burnt out is like a real thing that people need to take seriously. And when they do get to the point of burnout that sometimes people need to take a break from working and then they're able to take time to work on things so that they aren't burnt out anymore. I think that's fantastic. I found in Korea and in America that the work, 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 ignore stress, power through stress, ignore stress was pretty much what people expected from you. And obviously that's not healthy. And you can say that this work-life balance is really important amongst Europe and everything. Um, but I don't know, I didn't live in any other countries other than the Netherlands as far as Europe goes, so I don't want to, you know, say every country in Europe handles stress this way. Um, but I do like that the Netherlands does this, and I wish other countries would take burnout as seriously as the Netherlands does. Obviously, healthcare professionals in almost every place in the world, I would hope, do take this seriously, but I'm talking about the government and employers and things like that taking it more seriously. And I think the Dutch, like Dutch society really promotes relaxation and taking time off. I'm not saying everybody listens to that, but it's promoted a lot. Where in countries like Korea that I lived in and in America, they promote work, 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 work. If you're not working enough, then you're not doing enough. Um, if you're not you know, even at home, if you're not doing things at home and being super productive, then you're lazy. And I don't like that label. Um, I mean, I definitely feel that to this day. I, again, I'm very American in that sense that when I relax too much, I start to tell myself that I'm lazy. Like I need to be doing things. I shouldn't just be sitting around all Sunday or Saturday doing nothing, um, but it is important to relax. Relaxing isn't nothing, but yet in other societies, it's you're made to believe that when you relax, you're doing nothing and that's worthless and you need to do something that's meaningful, that isn't just sitting. So, you know, I, I think it's really nice that the Netherlands promotes that and it just makes life more, well, more relaxing and possibly more fulfilling depending on who you are. Well, hello, Chubby. How are you doing today? You are such a cute boy. Yes, you are. You're very, very cute. Now, you may be wondering why I'm talking to my cat. 
and why I'm talking to him at eye level. Well, uh, it's because I respect him. A sign of respect is to get on people's level and to talk with them in a meaningful, respectful way like this, not being overbearing and being above them, talking down to them. And when people are shorter, you know, it's not as if it's easy for them to just find a ladder to climb up on and make that eye contact. So when people, uh, parents, get down to their children's eye level and speak to them, I find that very respectful. And, uh, you know, I, I see that a lot in public where parents will get down on their knees when their child is having a fit or being upset or got hurt or something and they get down on their knees, eye level, talk you know, at a very hushed tone with them um, to where not everybody can hear them and we'll talk to them. Uh, I have no idea what they're saying because I don't eavesdrop like that and also my Dutch is not good enough to pick up on really quiet words like that. Um, and <laughs> so uh, I don't really know what they're saying but that approach to talking to young children, I think is such good parenting. I'm not gonna say that what they say is good parenting. I can only assume that it is if they're going to be respectful enough to get down to the child's level and speak with them. Um, but again, I, I don't really know. I mean, abuse still happens everywhere. So they could be saying things like, you better behave or else when I get home, I'm gonna smack you to, to the moon and back, I don't know. Um, I'm not really good about <laughs> with angry talk, to be perfectly honest, even though it was done to me a lot growing up. I guess I've kind of like pushed that out of my brain, like, ah, oh, we don't talk like that. That's not a good way of talking. Um, uh, but yeah, so I, I know that a lot of Dutch also like to toot their horn about how great their parenting is. And um, I know there's a lot of parenting books out there as well that people can mention um but all in all i just think that if you really want to understand good parenting you know uh, learn a lot more about childhood development and attachment theories and things like that and that will really help you understand more about good parenting i am not a parent um i just know stuff about psychology. Um, I am not a therapist or anything like that, nor a child development specialist, but I'm just saying all in all, uh, those sources are the ones that I trust more so than some random author who's writing a book. And, um, and yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I do think young children parenting is very good. Teenagers, on the other hand, while they're teenagers, I think it's really hard to parent them no matter where. Um, so I'm not going to get into that, but I'm talking about like the real small children. I think the parenting here is much better, uh, in America. I, I, well, it seems that I have seen a lot of people yelling at children in public and it's really sad and parents again, doing the overbearing thing where they're, yeah, it's just bad. And in Korea, I find that they expect their children to grow up super fast, and I think that's sad. They do deserve a childhood, and, um, and I don't feel like they get a full childhood. They get, like, partial childhoods, and uh, I think that's a shame. So, yay, duchies, with your child rearing. I think it's pretty good when it comes to the really, really young kids. Uh, so... Now, of course, there's a lot of things that I could come up with for things that are better in the Netherlands compared to other countries that I have lived in, uh, but I didn't. <laughs> I could have, but I didn't. Uh, these were just the five things that I brainstormed um, off the top of my head real quick uh, that I thought were worth mentioning because, yeah, I like them, and I wish there was more of it going on in the world and at least the places that I've lived, because I think it would be nice. Uh, yeah, that's basically it for this video, so thank you so much for making it to the end. Please let me know all the things that you think uh, about things in the Netherlands or in your country, or the things that I said, if I messed up on anything. I personally like corrections, as long as they're nice and polite, and most of the time they are. So thank you again for 
making it to the end. And until next time, stay happy, healthy, and... Lately, I've been really bad at these endings, but uh, enjoy some peanut butter. It's delicious.